My name is Catherine Beebe, and I am an assistant professor of medieval history and digital humanities at the University of Texas at Arlington. This presentation is part of the Birkbeck Leverhulme International Network on Pilgrim Libraries. In the 21st century, when we want to go summer special and we can't book a cheap flight or take a holiday, we can do the next best thing. We can watch a program about it on TV, pick up a book, or check it out online. Things weren't so different in the 15th century. Every year, fleets of ships left Europe to sail across the Mediterranean to what was considered the holiest spot on earth. Hundreds of pilgrims made their way to Jerusalem by sail, by foot, and by donkey, and returned home to tell others what they had seen. One of those who had made the journey was Felix Fabry, a friar from the German town of Ulm, who went on pilgrimage to Jerusalem twice, once in 1480 and once in 1483. Fabry preached in Ulm and in several women's convents in the surrounding area, and he spoke often about his Holy Land experiences. But for the nuns who listened to Fabry, however, the journey was almost impossible. They had taken vows of stability and enclosure, and they had promised to stay within the walls of their convent, never to leave it until they died. They read about Jerusalem in scripture, prayed about Jerusalem in their cells, sung about Jerusalem in choir. Torn between promises and desire, they knew the heavenly Jerusalem was always with them, but they couldn't travel to the Jerusalem on earth. That doesn't mean they didn't dream about it, though. In 1490, a group of nuns in the convents of Maidingen and Maidlingen had had enough. They went to Felix Fabry and asked him to write them a contemplative guide so that they, too, could make the pilgrimage in their minds. Fabry agreed, and a couple of years later, they had their text, known today as the Zion Pilger, a modern title, after the distinction in the text between the Zion pilgrims, named after Mount Sion in Jerusalem, who are those pilgrims who travel to Jerusalem in spirit, and the Ritter Bilgren, or Pilgrim Knights, those who went to Jerusalem in body as well. With this text, written by someone who had actually been to the holy places, the sisters could imagine themselves there, day by day, thinking themselves across the sea and through the desert to the place of their desire, and their prayers would carry them every step of the way. This is one part of their journey, a modern reconstruction of a few key moments, as it might have felt to them, and a unicorn. The text begins, Here is a spiritual pilgrimage to Jerusalem, taken from the beloved pilgrimage to the Holy Land, from one day's journey to the next, from Ulm to Jerusalem, Mount Sion and Sinai, and back again to Ulm. Day 1, The Beginning when the Sion pilgrims have read their prayers in their cells, they take up what they will carry with them over field and mountain, a satchel with their prayer book. After Mass, the prior and the brethren of the Dominican house in Ulm give the pilgrims the benediction of St. John, and with that they leave the city of Ulm in their imagination, going out over the Herdbrook Tower and out over the Danube, and in the evening they come to the city of Memmingen, where there is a women's convent of the Order of St. Augustine, there, they bide the night in vigil in the service of God. In the following days, they travel overland through Venice, then by sea to Jerusalem. There, in Jerusalem, they
they receive even better spiritual rewards and indulgences than the pilgrims who travel in body and by foot to the Holy Sepulchre, because the virtual Sion pilgrims can see everything, even places closed off to actual pilgrims. After seeking out the sacred sites of the Holy City, they leave Jerusalem to make the long journey to Mount Sinai and the grave of St. Catherine. On the way, they see something truly special. After sundown, in the cool of the night, the Sion pilgrims travel through the desert. On the 123rd day of their journey, at Vespertide, the pilgrims come to a high hill called the Renasseron, or Unicornis, in German, Einhorn, the Unicorn. The next day they rise and climb with great enjoyment. They pass thorny bushes found throughout the Holy Land, which some say are the very same ones that had been made into the crown of thorns for the Lord Jesus. On the top of the hill they stand and contemplate the unicorn, which is so wild and fierce against all men that no one can approach it. It is as big as a stallion and so strong that no one can ride it nor capture it with hounds. However, if a hunter wishes to capture it, he places a beautiful, chaste, well-adorned young virgin alone in the spot where the unicorn dwells. When the animal senses that the young woman is there, it bounds over with great joy to lay near the young girl and to put its head in her lap. The virgin encircles its head with her arms, and presently the unicorn falls asleep. Then, as it sleeps, the hunter comes and slaughters her beloved in her lap. It is from this animal that the hill Rhinoceron takes its name. Upon this hill, every Scion pilgrim meditates upon the image of the young girl, the Virgin Mary, and finds in the image of the unicorn, the image of Christ. And they spend the day and evening in joyous prayer, passing the night in vigil to the noble young virgin and the unicorn who rests next to her. pilgrims make their way to Mount Sinai and celebrate at dawn on the top of the mountain. With special devotion, they give thanks to God for bringing them to the end of their pilgrimage. For, from that place, all the rest of the journey, wherever they wander, is always after a journey back toward home. After visiting the pyramids of Cairo and the wonders of Alexandria, the virtual pilgrims make their way back to Ulm. From there, they disperse to their own convents, where they are welcomed home with great joy. They again take up their convent lives, through which they hope eventually to come to the real, everlasting life. Thus ends the pilgrimage of the Sion pilgrims to the holy lands beyond the sea. But the daughters of Sion, the Sion pilgrims, do not stop dreaming about Jerusalem.